What's going on friends and family? My name is Skylint. Welcome, and today we're going to be talking about my pick for the top 10 upcoming MMOs. These are MMORPGs absolutely worthwhile looking forward to, but I will admit, I have to admit that some of these games might not be for everyone, right? These games generally, from what we're seeing, the trend here for new online games is to really focus and pinpoint and hone in on particular niches, on particular communities, on a particular audience, and that's a really good thing, because recently, uh, you know, the last year, right, past couple of years, it's just been the trend for games, not just MMOs, to really spread themselves super thin, to be kind of generic and usual, and, and that's just, that's distasteful. Now we're getting games that are a little bit more specific, and I think that's very cool. That's very good, man. Okay, so these games might turn you on, might turn you off, but somewhere along the list, you're going to find at least one game that's going to be exciting, I promise you. So stick through it, guys. Keep the hype alive. Let's get into the list. Alright guys, let's kick off this top 10 list with a game called Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Now this is a game that I actually don't know that much about, but the more I learn about it, the more I kind of start to fall in love. Now I'm somebody who really loves action combat, or even a lot of casual MMORPGs, but there's something that I've been kind of craving. I've been craving a sort of like the, the old school, you know, like the EverQuest, you know, kind of style of gameplay, or like vanilla World of Warcraft almost, but you know, a little bit more hardcore, okay? I want a little bit more roleplay, I want a little bit more like statistical analysis and, and tactics and strategy. You know, actually, like, playing the game, you know, the Holy Trinity, and then that expanded, you know, the actual role play and the social aspect of MMORPGs, you know, really focusing on that RPG uh, <laughs> component, but, uh, yeah, Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen, is appearing to actually kind of, you know, be inspired from a lot of older MMORPGs, and really just kind of focusing on that. I'll admit that it also kind of, in itself, looks like an older MMORPG graphically. It's it's not too fantastic in terms of, you know, explosivity and action. It's no Wildstar, okay, it's no Guild Wars 2, but that's maybe a really, really good thing. You let me know in the comments below, guys. All right, guys, let's talk about Albion Online. Now, if you guys have seen my other top tens, you know I am pretty hyped for Albion Online, but I think it's about time to be a little bit more realistic, okay? So, the game has been in sort of a, an elongated development state. Okay, they keep pushing back the release date, and they keep making a lot of changes to the game. So, the game is supposed to be kind of a hardcore, open-world sandbox, a cross-platform mobile MMORPG, so you can play it on PC and mobile devices, and the game looks freaking awesome. It reminds me a lot of RuneScape, if you just took away the questing and just did PvP, or maybe sort of like a kind of like more intuitive and casual Ultima Online, I want to dare say, but they're making a lot of changes, they're kind of casualizing the game a little bit, kind of theme parking it, and uh, so it's becoming less of a sandbox, and maybe that could be good, maybe it's bad, I don't know, it's in this weird, confusing area for a lot of players, its population is kind of waning because of all the constant wipes, and I don't know, man, it's a confusing time for people who like Albion Online, and I just want to play the game, and I want you guys to play it, but they keep pushing back the release date, and so they, they keep, if they keep doing that, and keep making these crazy changes, well, it's just going to keep knocking down on my top 10 list, so now it's here, I'm still hyped, but I don't know for how much longer. Yo, Pirica Chronicle hype! Anyways, so this game is uh, looking pretty good, right? I mean, just looking from the trailer, the aesthetic. Actually, I put this in my anticipated, my upcoming anime game list because just like visually, it looks really awesome. It's supposed to be this incredibly like action-packed and gorgeous, cel-shaded looking game. You know, it's, it looks like an anime game brought to life and there's not really that many MMO anime games. And so this one, you know, true to the anime styling is just super exciting. Anyways, uh, Weeboo out. Okay, let's let's talk mechanics. Let's talk, let's talk game design. I think one thing that could be really tragic that this game was is is currently actually in development hell and it was really ambitious it was supposed to have like uh world crafting mechanics like you can actually create your own villages and stuff like from the fucking voxels from the very polygons themselves uh and maybe even like create quests and do some crazy things like that but i don't think that's that's probably going to be fully implemented into the game it's taken a long time to come out and i think they're going to cut some features so it's either going to be the action combat or it's going to be a lot of the crazy like minecrafty and customization um so it, we're either going to get a social game or we're going to get an action game. Either way though, it's going to be a good looking game. Chronicles of Illyria is pretty freaking weird, okay? Uh, so anyways, it's self-proclaiming to be the most dynamic and immersive MMO to date. Like, that's, that's really what it's focusing on. And yet, at the same time, there's gonna be fancy elements. So, yeah, Chronicles of Illyria is gonna be the first MMORPG where your character actually ages and dies. Yeah, that's, that's what kind of MMO this game is, guys. Seriously, immersion is literally the first line of how they describe the game in the overview, yeah. So that's gonna encourage you to think beyond just your character and their role in the larger story of the world. Yeah, absolutely. It's gonna focus on a closed economy 
economy with finite resources and non-repeatable questing. In a fully destructible environment, that will mean that the world is experienced differently for every single character. Now, how destructible, I don't know, but hey, destructibility at least is there. And each time you log in, there's gonna be something for you to participate in. You know, uh, local, regional, and national conflicts are continuously unfolding, giving birth to repeated opportunities for you to change the course of history uh, for the video game. So when you start the game, you enter as, as a member of a player or NPC ran family, and then you kind of work your way up, uh, you know, maybe from <laughs> just a humble adventurer to maybe a lord. You can develop your own dynasty and work your way up so maybe to king. Or, I mean, you can do whatever you want because the, the focus is on realism, the social aspects. I and mean, despite being a fantasy game, uh, maybe you want to be a merchant or something like that. Maybe you want to just go be a thief. Maybe you want to be an assassin. There's so much you can do, and that's the point. It's completely open-ended and immersive. If you're looking for an MMO to dive into, Chronicles of Illyria is trying to be that game. Now, coming in at number six on the list is a game called Worlds Adrift. Now, I'm pretty excited for this game because I've already played just a little bit of it. I got a little taste of it. You can actually see that on my channel where I went and I played with the island creator. So you can actually make your own islands and, and stuffs. Uh, you can actually, you know, morph around. It, it, it's kind of familiar if you ever played a game like Far Cry or maybe like Halo Forge, maybe, or ever played in a game engine, it, you know, it, or a modeler, a 3D modeler. It, it's, it's pretty intuitive, though, even if you haven't. And it's like that. Yeah, you like from the ground up, you know, you can make it as complex as you want to, but the game's pretty intuitive. You can jump in and make your own islands and that's for free you can do that right now guys and actually demo that out but the game is going to allow players to jump from island to island and i think there's going to be like this overall like overarching um overworld <laughs> that players are going to be able to traverse with airships and you're going to be able to make your own airships and then you also have grappling hooks and stuff and you can kind of play around with that on the island creator as well but yeah overall i think the game is going to be very focused on player versus player content and probably you know economy and trading and it seems like it's more of like an eve online if it was set in like the atmosphere of a world that happened to have floating islands and that's that's kind of the vibe i'm getting from this game but it's way action-packed, okay? At least from what I've seen from the trailers, what I've been teased, and I am being teased, and I'm actually pretty excited to finally jump into the world of Worlds Adrift. Halfway on the list, we've got Lineage Eternal. Now, it's only halfway on the list, uh, even though it's got such a history, right? Lineage, a pretty freaking big game. It's just the fact that there is a direct competitor that I am personally more excited for. But Lineage Eternal is doing some really crazy new things, okay? Now, there's pretty, it's pretty rare whenever you play an online action RPG where you personally control multiple characters. The only one I've ever personally played was a freaking Lego minifigures online game uh, where you actually rotated between different characters. And I think this game, Lineage Eternal, is actually going to do a very similar system. So, you have this like band of characters that you can pick and choose from these different classes and you kind of just hot swap between them as you play so yeah that's kind of weird and interesting but uh, anyways yeah so lineage does have well it has a lineage okay so there's a lot riding on this game there's a lot of pressure but this, this also means a lot of money and a lot of attention going into this game hopefully love hopefully there's gonna be a lot of content to play but uh, you know just looking at the kind of unique approach that they're taking for the genre I'm assuming whatever content that they do create for the game it will be a unique experience and I can't wait to try it out all right, guys, next up on the list, we have Camelot Unchained. This is going to be the true successor to the Dark Ages of Camelot. And this is essentially the game that spawned the whole like realm versus realm versus realm gameplay that we see in ESO, that we see in Guild Wars 2 and a couple other games like Planicide. This is completely focused on player versus player content. And it's going to have incredibly intricate combat with all the different crazy spells and, you know, the intricate combinations of different roles to play from CC oriented roles. You got your Trinity, your healing, your damage. You have all that, but it's all completely focused on player versus player. It is a proper PvP MMORPG. It is the proper PvP MMORPG, aside from something like Ultima. Um, it's really just about the combat. Now, I, what, what that actually looks like, what that's going to properly entail, to be honest, I don't actually know. The game is kind of a little bit of ways away, so it's going to need some polishing. It's going to need, you know, some actual content and stuff, but, uh, you know, it's upcoming list. That's to be expected. Some are going to be further away than others, uh, but still, even though it is in the distance, I think it's starting to illuminate and shine very brightly. All right, let's do it. Let's talk about Star Citizen. Now, I don't know uh, when we're actually going to be able to really play Star Citizen. I mean, we can kind of test it. We can demo it. But I don't know when it's going to be really in a state where we can call it like an MMO. I mean, at least like an alpha or something where we can really play around with other players and really get these guilds playing these this game. Uh, but I, I think we all, all right now know the ambition of Star Citizen. And it's one of the few games where it, they are just so tremendously ambitious. But I really can't say too many negative things about it. Like they are slowly but surely actually like delivering on all those promises. Like 
like this, I mean, the game has a tremendous amount of backing, but I mean, that also means a lot of pressure, you know, there's a lot of eyeballs on this game, absolutely. But I think most of us are just looking up to the game. I think a lot of other games also, like Dual Universe, I probably could have put on this list, and a few others, very similar in, in concept, but I think Star Citizen is going to be the one. Okay, maybe, maybe it's quite possible that it, it, maybe some other games might do some lobbied dogfighting better technically, you know. Maybe EVE Online also will, will be kind of like that tactical and strategical game, you know, the, the economy-based gameplay is, is, is going to probably be untouched, but all in all, Star Citizen is still going to be absolutely filling the niche of Space Sandbox MMORPG. Yeah, guys, uh, number two is going to be Lost Dark, and you guys saw this. It was going to be high on the list. Everybody has this super hyped on the list, and I, I'm, I'm going to do that, too. I mean, on every other list, it's been either number one or number two, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it at number two this time because uh, even though I know it's going to be a very social and they're attempting to be a true MMO, it still resembles very much an online action RPG. Uh, of course, unabashedly, it is going to be an action game. It's going to be a role-playing game, but, uh, you know, to, to what extent is it going to be truly an MMO? I do not know. Otherwise, aside from that, it's it's probably going to be a, the perfect action RPG. It looks fucking gorgeous. It looks amazing. I'm sure the world building is going to be unique just from the very first 10 minute trailer where they were just showing off the world. Seems like it's got some uh, crazy world building. Absolutely. But to what extent, you know, what massivity is that world? I don't know. So that's the only reason it's not number one. Uh, I, I honestly just kind of rotate this, you know, between number one and three on all these top 10 lists of all these different games. It's pretty hype. I am getting kind of tired, honestly, of uh, trying to remix and trying to re-explain Lost Ark over and over again. So I'm just going to leave it at that. And my number one most anticipated MMO that's going to be releasing, probably not too soon actually, is a game called Crowfall. Okay, so Crowfall has me excited at first because whenever I was looking at the videos, it seemed like they had a lot of inspiration from MOBA specifically. So instead of having classes that have like a tremendous amount of customization, um, they're kind of doing the opposite, where every single class is really more of like a character. I mean, you can even play as a freaking centaur and stuff. Like every character is wholly unique and wholly different, and then we're going to have lots of different classes to play with, uh, which I think is really cool. Now the combat system, you know, of course they're going to do some tinkering and haven't played myself. Uh, yeah, devs, if you're listening, I'd really love to play. But anyways, um, it seems like it's gonna have, like, voxel destruction, it's gonna be really impactful, and the game is a PvP game, um, but what I really like about this game is that it's wholly focusing on the concept of player versus environment versus player. We really don't see that too often. World of Warcraft open world? Maybe, kind of, it doesn't really work anymore. World versus world versus world in Guild Wars 2? Maybe, sort of? Elder Scrolls Online? Kind of, that's like half the game, but this is gonna be wholly the game. Player versus environment versus player. Uh, there's gonna be lots of different campaigns running at any given time. I, th I don't know how many I don't know how big, but anyways, there's gonna be these campaign worlds, you jump into these worlds, you contest resources, you fight mobs and bosses, and other players also trying to kick your ass at the same time as they're trying to kick that goblin's ass over there, uh, you know, uh, contesting uh, ore spots or fishing spots, things like that, and then these campaigns are gonna rotate, these worlds are gonna rotate, and you're just gonna be constantly doing new things, fighting new people, and kicking ass all over the place, and they're gonna bring that loot back to your bases, and you can actually make, like, keeps and stuff, and it's, you're gonna actually be able to create castles, and apparently, like, there's gonna be some, like, siege warfare and things, I don't know if it's gonna be lobbied, kind of like how it is in Albion Online. I don't quite know how it's going to work. I actually have no idea how this game actually works, uh, to be honest. Uh, is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? I don't know, but the concept is original in my opinion, and I'm extremely excited to finally get to play this game. Please, please, please let me get to play this game. Yo, thanks so much for watching my top 10 upcoming MMORPG list. I know that uh, some people are going to be watching this video a little bit later. I know and, and if I missed a game or if there was a game that was late announced, absolutely, guys, leave it in the comments below. This is a community effort, okay? And I think that's really in the spirit of MMOs anyways. You know, massively multiplayer. It's all about being social, playing with other players, and absolutely, that's what my channel is all about. Finding new games, sharing them, first impressions, reviews, and literally streaming them and playing with you guys. So check that out. Check out the new stuff. Hopefully you stay around, fam. Okay, so subscribe. Make sure you like so other people can join the family, friends, okay? And leave in the comments below absolutely your thoughts and opinions. I hope hope you had fun. Hope you have fun with the games. My name's Skylance, and I'll see you in the next one.